Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Family of Tech. And this week, we're gonna be taking a look at how I would recommend that you set up your Sony a6600, a6400, or even the a7 III for shooting sports and action photography. There are multiple of settings that you can change when you're shooting sports, but I'm gonna tell you the one that you have to be on top of because they're related to exposure, to focus, to drive mode, and the white balance. Before we begin guys, if you're new to the channel, I do a lot of camera filmmaking and drone videos, so if that's something that you like, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our videos. All right guys, so let's not waste any more time and let's get on with the video. So all right guys, so let's begin. So in sport or fast action photography, this is where your subjects are gonna be in motion and you have to set up your camera in a way that you can freeze the action. This is probably not going to be the moment that you want to see motion blur on any of your images. So you have to find a way to freeze the action so you can have sharp images. And the way to do that is with number one, using a fast shutter speed, and number two, with a good tracking system on the camera that can focus and follow up on the action. So the first step is to put your camera on manual mode because that's gonna give you the most options possible. Second step, like I mentioned before, you need a faster shutter speed to freeze the action. So what I would recommend, depending on the lighting situation, is that you choose a shutter speed between 800 to 1000. And that's only to begin with, because most of the time I find myself shooting between 1500 and 3000 for a second. And that's really gonna depend on what sport is the one that you're shooting, because a sport like tennis or even volleyball might require even higher shutter speed than that. The third step is to use a wide aperture on the lens. And this is where lenses with a fixed wide aperture come in very handy. The ones that I recommend for APS-C cameras are the new Sony 16 to 55 f2.8, which I made a video before and you can check it out right here. This one is useful, especially if you're close to your subject and you're not shooting for very far away. And the second one is a Sony 70 to 350, that even though it doesn't have a fixed aperture, is gonna give you the reach that you need for many sports situations. If you're shooting with a Sony a7 III, you probably want to use a Sony 70 to 200 f2.8, or you can wait for the new Tamron whenever that one comes out. ISO, which is a sensitivity to light, ideally you can set it up at 100, but mostly once you have a very fast shutter speed, you probably will have to bump it up to 400 or even higher. And also make sure that you disable the auto ISO feature, especially for shooting sports, because that can ruin your photos. For the white balance, you can set it to auto because mostly these cameras do a pretty good job on that. But if you can, I would try to set it up manually using one of these color checkers, links down below. It's a little bit pricey, but it's something that every photographer needs in their camera bag. But if you don't want to spend the money on that, I would recommend that at least you get a great card like this one and bring it every time that you're shooting sports. For the focus mode and for anything that is moving, I recommend you choose autofocus continuous and that's gonna be on menu one, page five. That's gonna keep the camera adjusting to the movement of you and your subjects. Focus area. Usually I use zone because sometimes it's difficult to keep focus on things that are small or that are far away from you. And also by using zone, it gives you more room to play with, especially if your subject is making random movements. You can also experiment using one of the tracking features because that's gonna recognize your subject and will try to stay on it. But again, sometimes it's difficult to track a subject that is moving randomly using just this feature. And finally, the drive mode. You want to be in the continuous shooting mode. And here you have a couple of options. You have high, medium, and low, depending on how many frames per second that you want. If you want to know how I set up my camera for taking portraits or taking the best video possible, you should see these videos I made before and that's gonna explain how to get the best footage possible out of your camera. Links will be in the description below. That's it for today, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more camera filmmaking and drone videos. See you in the next one.